This episode of Off the Cuff is somewhat of a supplemental to a blog I did back in January of this year, 2023, called Operation DeathCon 3, which you can find at batshitcave.blogspot.com, or you can watch the video version I did on this same channel somewhere. So here's an article by boston.com that was published or updated on October 23, 2023. Some audience members reportedly walked out of Dave Chappelle's show in Boston last Thursday after the comedian criticized Israel's bombing of Gaza, according to the Wall Street Journal. So this reportedly occurred, according to Wall Street Journal. Well, here's the article right here from the Wall Street Journal. You can't read all of it unless you have a, an account. But you can see here they're sort of breaking it down and Pretty much all of the media outlets reporting on this story, which is somewhat viral right now at the moment, they're all referring back to this article, which doesn't seem to be quoting Dave Chappelle much, and I don't believe has any video, because you can't find any video anywhere of this. Chappelle addressed the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas during the TD Garden show, first condemning the Palestinian militant group's October 7 attack on Israel the WSJ reported. Okay, Hamas is not just a Palestinian militant group. They are a terrorist organization. They flew in on paragliders and slaughtered hundreds of people, women, children, slaughtered them, cut their heads off, raped them, took them as hostages, just a sheer act of of terrorism. That's the definition of terrorism. So they're kind of softening the language. The Wall Street Journal reported. So it's it's like you're telling us a story that that you heard from someone else. However, the comic also criticized what he described as war crimes in Gaza and accused the U.S. of aiding the slaughter of innocent civilians. The news outlet reported. Again, we don't know this firsthand. We're just telling you what the news outlet reported. The Wall Street Journal, which we have no idea how reliable that article is. So. So this is, you know, this is the definition of taking something out of context, putting words in someone's mouth. Where's the quotes from Dave Chappelle saying these things they're they're telling us he's saying? The commotion reportedly began after Chappelle said he didn't think students should lose job offers for supporting Palestinians. When an audience member yelled for Chappelle to shut up, the comedian critiqued the Israeli government for cutting off water and other basic supplies to Gaza, and accused the Middle East nation of killing innocent people, according to Wall Street Journal. Audience members were reportedly split. There's that word again, reportedly. They didn't see this happen. They're just saying, well, this is what they said happened. While some cheered and shouted free Palestine, others yelled, what about Hamas? Or got up and left, the journal reported. Near the end of this show, Chappelle addressed Israeli policies and the Hamas attacks and said two wrongs don't make a right, according to the news outlet. You know, they're making a big deal out of this, but this is a comedian. This is Dave Chappelle. He's a comedian. Why are we taking so seriously something a comedian says? Because these are like the new politicians. These are the new, you know, for for the people who don't care what's going on in politics and say they don't pay attention and stuff, these people end up getting informed by Dave Chappelle and people like him. They end up getting informed by the headlines they happen to see on the news, they, whatever quick blip they see on CNN. So what happens is the consequence of, quote, not being interested in politics is that they're completely informed by the establishment, and that's what they repeat. So they end up being mouthpieces of the establishment. And that's what Dave Chappelle is. He's a mouthpiece for the establishment. He's a slave for them because what he does is he mostly leans towards the mainstream narrative and occasionally he'll say something that appears to be rebellious and appears to, you know, cause a shitstorm, yet they keep giving him an audience. They they don't shut him up. They they say, oh, it's so offensive what he said, but then they keep, he keeps getting booked and he keeps getting these huge audiences. So his influence, what he's saying, obviously conforms to what the great oppressor in the world, the one who owns all the media and wants to brainwash us all, he's obviously a tool for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be amplifying his his voice so much here. 
A spokeswoman for Chappelle told the Wall Street Journal he denies being in Boston that night, though the TD Garden website indicates he performed two shows for his stand-up comedy tour on Thursday and Friday. A TD Garden spokesperson confirmed to Boston.com that the shows were both held as scheduled. Chappelle's spokeswoman said that he denies being in Boston, so what does that mean? Chappelle is no stranger to controversy. In recent years, he's frequently made jokes at the expense of transgender people. Oh my God. Prompting Netflix employees to stage a walkout in protest over his stand-up special, The Closer, in which he likens being transgender to wearing blackface, says gender is a fact, and notes that he's a member of Team TERF, an acronym referring to trans-exclusionary radical feminists, according to the Washington Post. Regardless of how you actually feel about these issues, I think what Chappelle's job to do here is to side with Hamas slash Palestine against Israel. And when we take into account that in his uh, monologue on Saturday Night Live, which I talked about in Operation Death Con 3 blog, he basically says the Jews run Hollywood and you can never say anything bad about them. And uh, he's talking about uh, Kanye West you know, tweeting something that he's going to go death con three on the Jews when he wakes up. And essentially Kanye is saying the same thing. He's just, he's playing the, you know, the crazy black man losing his mind, you know, outside of society, even though he isn't outside of society because he, he still gets a voice. I mean, if they don't like what you're saying, they shut you up. They don't give you a microphone and they keep giving Kanye a microphone. So that tells me they want his messages out there because they're paying him. And when I say they, I mean the great oppressor. I mean the man. I mean the one that, I mean the machine that we're supposed to be raging against. But instead, you know, Yi and Chappelle, they're not raging against the machine. They, they're part of the machine. You know, and we're supposed to think that because Yi says, you know, white lives matter and, you know, might wear a red Trump hat once in a while. We're, su- we're supposed to believe that that means he thinks for himself and he's not really part of the establishment. What, what that says is only crazy black men uh, are Republican and, and like Trump. Anyway, Ye says a lot regarding this tweet on Drink Champs, which is a show he went on and talked a lot about this, where he further explained he basically said he sees himself as Moses. He's likening himself to Moses in the Bible And he flat out says he's jealous of the Jews and he wants what they have. It's almost like the seeds were being sown late last year slash early this year for the reaction to this attack on Israel. And all the media, they're they're using this Dave Chappelle routine, which I guess nobody filmed. There's another article I saw that said uh, cell phone video wasn't allowed, which I don't understand how the hell you enforce that. I mean, Someone's got to have a phone. It doesn't happen that a show with this many people at it doesn't have some type of video leaked. So that tells me that the the internet and the media, they're they're being very tight and careful about this campaign here to frame Dave Chappelle's show in this manner. So whether Chappelle actually said these things or not, whether he was in Boston or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is what the media is trying to convey to me and you. And that is that Chappelle was allegedly knocking Israel for uh, reacting too violently against Gaza as as a retaliation for Hamas brutally slaughtering hundreds of their people. And then they described the divisiveness of the crowd, pro Israel versus pro Hamas slash Palestine. And what they're doing is they're trying, it's, it's the divide and conquer. This, these are the two camps that they want America in. They want us getting all worked up about this when our own country is falling apart. America is $33 trillion in debt. Fentanyl deaths, fentanyl overdoses are way higher than they've ever been. Uh, human trafficking, child trafficking is up way higher than it's ever been. The fentanyl is all coming in over the southern border. The cartels are running the border. And they're just allowing all these people to come in. Who knows who they are? It could be terrorists. You know, th- what happened in Israel could very well happen here. They're, they may very well be planning it under our noses. 
You know, all this is happening in our country, and we're supposed to just be divided over this issue, over you know whether we support Israel or Hamas, a terrorist organization, Hamas. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Dave Chappelle happens to be uh, Muslim. It says here he converted to Islam when he was 17. And here he is supposedly denouncing Israel for, you know, responding to an attack by a Muslim extremist organization. Now, Black Lives Matter, uh, Chicago got in trouble for posting this meme. Look at this. I stand with Palestine. Can you believe this? These are the, the, the paragliders that went in and slaughtered all those people at the music festival. What are they doing celebrating them? Putting them on a pedestal like, yeah, these are the good guys. No, they're not. Look at this. this. I mean, this is so offensive. You know, and if you look into BLM, I've talked about them before. You know, they're, they're nothing more than, a, you know, a, a money laundering operation at, at, at worst and at best just a fundraiser for the uh, Democratic Party. And they actually removed it and they apologized. Yesterday, we sent out messages that we aren't proud of. We stand with Palestine and the people who will do what they must to live free. Our hearts are with the grieving mothers, those rescuing babies from rubble who are in danger of being wiped out completely. Now, this is obviously a direct response to the what we're told is fact that Hamas decapitated the heads of babies, Israeli babies. And even the Anti-Defamation League has commented on this. The post shared in recent days by BLM chapters in Chicago and L.A. and other fringe groups glorifying the Hamas terrorists who used hang gliders to infiltrate Israel, slaughtering over 1,000 innocents, is beyond sick and twisted. It's anti-Semitic, dehumanizing, and could prompt more violence. So, you know, while this is a very concerning issue, you know, I mean, World War III, all the signs of World War III are right in our faces, you know, and we're so desensitized after COVID, you know, it's almost like we don't know what hit us. You know, the New World Order is making its move. And we're just like, la di da di da all right, I'm paying double for a, a Big Mac. No big deal. I mean, for fuck's sake, we got to care about where we live. We got to care about our home. We got to stop feeling bad about, you know, putting ourselves first. You know, it's not racist to put your own country first. If your house is on fire and your neighbor's house is on fire, which one are you going to put out first? You're going to put the one out in your own house. It, it, what sense does it make to walk outside of your house, let it burn, and go help the neighbor across the street? What sense does that make?